with the force king one of the one of the things i was trying to convey is that disavowal of free will in exchange for um the safety of being part of a the societal structure whatever the form or iteration of it is in that moment of time and and so it's again it's like it's empire versus kingdom in a different way the the soul spark within the boy's heart is is an indication of the truth of the connection of which he truly is and beyond something that his father tries to nurture and yet something about his his own youthful uh immature impulses um his own his own desires are something that the culture that empire as emblemized by the forest king and his you know this virtual reality sprite he is basically tapping through the algorithm into the boy's weaknesses and and, and finding the best way to turn him into simply uh, a puppet within that functions under the rules and and uh, opinions and, and behaviors of the video game and you know we are all very much like Westworld, right? There's a, Westworld is such a great allegory. I've only seen season one, but it's such a great allegory of awakening uh, in the form of these uh, cyborgs or robots. I'm not, I don't know what they're called, but they're not sentient. They, they perform functions and programs. They're on these uh, program pattern loops, mm -hmm. but gradually they, they start becoming sentient as in, oh, there's a choice beyond just the prompt that I have. Mm -hmm. and that's all of us, right? We are our familial and cultural makeup being in the material space based on uh, natural patterns of nature of biology of matter we are tethered to that but somehow within it through the soul spirit is then animating it and the more that we start allowing the influence of the greater aspect of spirit and and co-authoring our experience with it the more we have to let go of the of these lower patterns, uh, which are also part of this uh, culture of empire. And yeah, it's just it's it's a theme that's personal and and it's collective and it's very dear to me in my own process of, uh, you know, just my own development. And, and I clearly I'm finding new ways to spell it out for myself and for others as I make more sense of it. One of the reasons as a child, I kind of around age 11 or 12, I got interested in, in bodybuilding and, and did that into my mid twenties. Um, and since then, although I still like to train and everything, it's, it's, it doesn't carry the same uh, meaning, but the, because the original intention, I think for me, and it's different for everyone, I guess, to, to exercise things like that, but it was that I wanted to create a, an icon or an image uh, of something you know like a he-man character as and this is where i saw the common thread it was because you know we create these images either on paper or you know in our in ourselves the personas we try and take on i think if you have a deeper hunger for truth though you want those externalized strengths or those imageries to kind of just be a visual representation of uh, a, a, a greater strength, you know, to to be a courageous character or to to be a, a noble character that you know that can that can lead people to to something better or what have you, and uh, but when the again it kind of goes back to when these images um, these images can be used well and 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 poorly, you know, and and I think in terms of bodybuilding, one of the things I struggled with was that the emphasis all became the physical, and, and not that it was ever anything but that on one level but you could imagine as a kid at, at a certain stage in it that these were functional bodies they they were they weren't so big and the emphasis wasn't so much on that they that they could be archers they could be soldiers and you'd see that in the films in the 80s and 90s but then the the sport itself just kept needing more and more for the the whole thing the whole point to be focused on the the object the muscles and and uh, it got to the point now where you know there's it does have its fan base but people wouldn't be able to relate to it as, as believable to have a character like that in the same way they made maybe would have in the 80s when it was a bit more moderate and and um i wonder you know if that's kind of happening in the film industry too a little bit because you see characters that are you know like a lot of these superhero characters and everything but we're so saturated with spectacle and people are so hungry for something of more substance that, you know, now all the money that's been funneled into these things, it's not getting the same returns because, you know, the, it was never fully just about the object. It was about what the object lives out in terms of truth or nobility or, or you know, 
honesty or integrity, whatever those attributes are that we want to attach to those images. When you lose those things, it just becomes another overblown object. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I hear you. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. It seems that we 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 have this tendency to get something that get into something that works that may have the right impulse, but then by we sort of lose track and take it to an extreme level where it's lost its uh, connection to the original impulse or to whatever made it wholesome for us. But with, you know, just to defend some of like your bodybuilding and just bodybuilding in general, <laughs> I, I can see yeah where it's gone and where there's a sort of a fanaticism right now, especially with all the enhancements, you know, that, that even more enhancements than we had 20, 30 years ago in the times of Arnold. Um, it's, it's still, it's, it's this, there is a, a noble heroic impulse of shaping it's there's hardship you know that that goes into it there's discipline there's an artistic aspect to like shaping the body but then also um you know it's like to what point if it if it is aggrandizement of the self of um you know if it's a, if there's a heroic aspect to it as in like i will build this body it will be beautiful as a testament to my hard work but it's also in service to I don't know, saving something or lifting something else or constructing, perhaps then it's uh, it becomes more noble, right? So just mm -hmm. like in the myth of Hercules, that body is uh, is venerated because it's a tool of um, of, of of liberation, mm -hmm. of um, a tool of of a heroic action of of you know bringing light into darkness, uh, of of facing one's courage. So um, I think even the the superhero films, I think they're they're not serving the heroic impulse or just the impulse of the sublime that we all got from the you know first trilogy of Star Wars or any of these mythologies that truly touch us on a deeper level. And when uh, when that impulse is lost, it's just a shell. And of course, people can keep trying to return to it to to get that first fix that they that they got. But like any <laughs> any any drug, right? Uh, from what I hear, from like a heroin dose, you never get that first you know first first hit again but it's mm -hmm. it's about aligning to the core to the core core purpose over and over yeah well and, and that i guess too is why i, I thought it was interesting in kingdom uh, it, there's a, a moment where the character pulls out the uh the sword of i guess i interpret it as the sword of truth um and uh, and you can see it, it, there's an athleticism in the imagery that that makes the character look strong but it, that that kind of perfectly kind of encapsulates a, a balance that I I think you know a lot of people are striving for when they're you know trying to learn about discipline but in, in the gym or when they're trying to put into a story a strong looking character the 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 fact that they look a certain way um, is a reflection of the deeper meaning in the story or at least ideally that's what you know should be and it 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 kind of lends weight to. Um, to what the story is saying about inner strength and and uh, standing with courage, things like that. When we see it out of alignment in in the world around us in art, you know, when it's all about um, the imagery and not about the substance, or you know, things are are very heavy on substance, but it's not delivered well because people don't relate to the imagery around it. So, um, uh, bravo for that. It's it's for anyone watching. Uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, to Kingdom. And uh, if you'd like to see uh, some of Lugumar's other work as well, I guess In Shadow is going to be on there as well. I can put a link to In Shadow and The Forest King. Uh, that's I saw it on Tubi, but are there other places where people can find uh, The Shadow King? Yeah, people can see it for free on Tubi or Plex with a free membership, or they can find it on uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, it's under the series Red Iron Road, and they can see The Forest King there. Are, are, are you working on anything now or have any plans for the future? Uh, there's always things in development uh, there are possibilities i've had um there was a feature i was going to work on and I, I decided not to that was a few years ago and let it go for 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 a bit so yeah i have I have some ideas some my some collaborators but uh you know how this space is uh, <laughs> navigating the uh the funding aspect of it and and all, all of that and animation is such a long process that committing to a three-year uh project is is quite a task so you know it will, we will see i know for me some of the the pitch material that i kind of created it actually purposely integrates into the midpoint of a story in flashback scenes using animation rather than 
um, you know, the conventional, you know, just going back and, and shooting it, you know, live somewhere. But in order to kind of further integrate people into the kind of idea that you're telling a kind of almost graphic novel type concept, but you, you might do that with live actors in one section and then animation in another. And um, I don't know if that's getting more popular now or not, but it's certainly been integrated into a couple of things that I'm I'm trying to kind of work on getting off the ground. We'll see what happens with those. Yeah, I mean, I've I've uh, I've done some um, lower budget experiments with uh, live action, and it's something that interests me. It's not exclusively animation, of course. That's where I have um, sufficient skills to to you know carry a project to to fruition. Uh, I am interested in live action simply because um, working with actors and human beings is is <laughs> something that's fulfilling, rewarding, and there's a faster turnover rate. You can tell more stories um, instead of you know waiting. With, three, four years that it takes from development to completion with an animated film. Um, so yeah, right now with all the various technologies with Unreal Engine and some of the other aspects, I think uh, with the cost cutting um, capabilities, uh, we'll see how independent cinema shapes up. But it's all a matter of, you know, recouping, recouping the investment for anyone who who puts money in and I, I imagine that I, do, I personally don't know too much about that I know that's something that you you uh, explore mm -hmm. and it's uh yeah just finding these new ways so that um the gatekeepers that we have these big institutions uh if we can somehow find more ways to tap into the audience directly or you know democratize that in a, in a freer way perhaps we can have more more of that kind of content come come to